Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this room, the fight starts now! So let's go. How do you like it? Close the show. Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to London. What a beautiful day it is here in the capital. We are at Portland Place today, just a couple of days away from a world championship triple header. There is our main event challenger, Andrew Campos. There is the champion, the IBF world flyweight champion, Sonny Edwards, who believes he is the best in the division. He's got to prove it over the next 12 months or so. Of course, his main uh, titles, Darren, at Abraham Rodriguez and, and Julio Cesar Martinez. Until he gets to them, though, he's got to be switched on on Saturday. Good bit of needle between these two yeah. over the last couple of years on uh, social media and yesterday as well. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was a little surprised, if I'm honest. You never know what you're going to get from Sonny, but he was fired up. He yeah, was, uh, he's been uh, chipping, Campbell's has been chipping away at him on social media for yeah. about two years, he said, in his he DMs has. and stuff, and he doesn't feel he's warranted his position as, as challenger here, and I think he wants to make an example of him, but nice to see him with a bit of fire in his back. Yeah, definitely, well. and look, I'll start with Campos. He can fight. Yeah. You know, you don't get to, to was it 15 and 0 with not being out of the fight, and I know this is a huge step up for Campos, but he can, like, like I say, I, what I've seen of him, he's, a, he's almost like a little pocket rocket. Mm. He's sharp, he's got a lovely jab, he varies it up head and body, but this, if you like, this is about Sonny Edwards. Yep. Let's not get it wrong. This is, you know, the, the new dawn, if you like, for Sonny Edwards, a new chapter for him. Uh, he's buzzing, he's raring to go. And, and look, I, I, I do believe, I have to say this, I think winning, yes, is the most important thing. I feel Sonny's got to look good in this one. Uh, we've got nine fights uh, on the card in total. It's an early start on Saturday. Uh, 20 past four, Muhammad Ali in against uh, Brian Castro, Shannon Ryan in action as well, George Liddard from Tony Sims' gym uh, under the guidance of Kev Mitchell, Yusuf Kamari and Reese Bellotti will be good contesting. Uh, yeah, really good uh, British uh, super featherweight title eliminator over 10 rounds on before the bell. That will be yeah. roughly five past six. Myself, Darren and Barry will be on the commentary desk for that one. And we've got a whole load of big fights uh, on the bill uh, starting yeah. at seven o'clock uh, yeah, on the zone. Yeah, yeah, but before yeah. we hear about them, we're going to go down to the desk now and hear from all the fighters ahead of a big night on Saturday. Here's Eddie Hearn. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to London, ahead of a huge World Championship triple header, live and exclusive on the zone around the world this Saturday from Wembley Arena. A fantastic night of boxing, boxing from top to bottom. Of course, the three world champions here to my right, protecting their crowns, and the three challengers to the left, chasing dreams, waterfalls, and everything that comes with it on Saturday night, live on DAZN. Before we talk to all the fighters involved, we're going to speak to Alfie Sharman from DAZN, ahead of what is a huge run of events coming, six weeks on the spin, all around the world. Yeah, thanks, Eddie. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, we're incredibly excited to have Sonny Edwards join DAZN, uh, another world champion. It's a huge, huge signing for Matchroom, um, and obviously an amazing event on Saturday. Uh, with a game opponent in Andres Campos. Look, if, um, if Sonny does a business on Saturday, you don't look too far ahead, but there's huge fights out there for him at a global scale. Uh, Bam Rodriguez, Julio Cesar Martinez, to name just two. Um, these have the ability at a global scale to make Sonny the household name that he deserves to be, and we're really excited and really proud to be part of that journey. Obviously, looking to the undercard as well, as with uh, all matchroom shows, um, an amazing card. Uh, Nina Hughes, Ellie Scottney, both uh, fighting in world title fights, the return of Johnny Fisher and, and, and his army. So the atmosphere is going to be incredible on Saturday. And make sure you tune in live and exclusive worldwide on the zone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Alfie. We start with our Before the Bell section, which has become synonymous with our broadcasts, making sure that our youngest prospects in the stable have worldwide exposure around the world. And we'll be kicking off the night with a young man that I think has bundles and bundles of ability and talent, young Muhammad Ali. Welcome, Muhammad. Uh, huge fan base coming with you again to London on Saturday. Newcastle for the professional debut, but ready for fight number two at the weekend. Yep. Uh, I'm enjoying it, obviously. Um, debut went well. 
we're on to the second one now in London. I uh, can't wait. And obviously for you, part of the Dave Coldwell team, fantastic training camp out in LA. Plenty, plenty of learning experiences for you there. Yeah, I've um, got some solid sparring out there. Um, David was well happy how I was uh, performing and I'm well happy with it, so yeah. Good to see you back. Two world championship female fights, but also one of the brightest prospects in world boxing in Shannon Ryan, making a professional debut for the Matchroom team, part of, of course, the 258 management stable of Anthony Joshua's as well. Shannon, welcome. We're delighted to welcome you to the Matchroom and DAZN team and uh, ready to fight at Wembley Arena on Saturday. Yeah, so firstly, I just wanted to say, Eddie, thank you so much for this opportunity. I truly believe this will be a best um, career performance to date. We've been working so hard in the gym for the last six months since my previous fight, and I can't wait to showcase my skills come Saturday night. So you've been working hard, and, and some big fights around the division for you on a domestic and a, a global scale as well. Eight rounds for you on Saturday, and, and won't be long before you're moving into the championship rounds. Yeah, I believe this one is definitely a step up for me, a nice eight-rounder, and then, yeah, we'll push on for the ten-rounders at the end of the year. Looking forward to seeing action for the first time on Saturday. George Lidard, another man bringing plenty of support to the Wembley Arena, part of the Tony Sims gym. George, fight number three on Saturday, been at Wembley Arena, been up in Liverpool as well, and, and now really starting to get your teeth into the, the professional ranks. Yeah, no, I'm ready to go now, really excited, and, uh, yeah, pleased to be back here, and thanks again for another good opportunity. Plenty of hard sparring with you, obviously Felix Cash and Conor Ben in the gym as well, and starting to find your feet as a pro. Those first two performances, very good, good stoppages as well, and, and everyone in the gym talking about how much strength you're finding and, and how hard you're punching right now. Yeah, you know, I've just been putting the graft in, sparring, you know, world-level fighters week in, week out, and uh, it will show again Saturday night when we go 3 and with another impressive performance. Thanks, George. Always try and put on a little 50-50 fight on before the bell, a little 10-rounder, giving two guys that we like and we've worked with an opportunity to go on. And winner stays on in this respect. And two fighters that we've seen before, two fighters that have won championships as well on our shows. We'll start with Reese Bellotti, um, what I called him one of my favourite fighters this week. Um, the story of Reese Bellotti is had a great job working on film sets. I mean, he's a very bright young man. He was a fantastic amateur with a huge following all of a sudden wanted to turn professional, gave up his job, went out, won titles, won the Commonwealth title, fought for the British title as well. And Reese, you've stayed busy. You lost against Raymond Ford, who I believe is actually going to go on and become the world featherweight champion. You came back with a knockout victory. You're back in a big championship fight. Um, the final eliminator for the British title as well against Yusuf Kamari. Ready to go, plenty of experience now. Looking forward to getting back in there. Yeah, 100%, like you say, I've uh, got a lot of experience now and I want to be in big fights this is a big fight and uh, I'm, glad to, I'm glad the opportunity come and I'll, I'll take all fights How's that transition come obviously when you started you were very raw, very green you were thrown into big fights, championship fights quite early you were renowned for your power and now you've got plenty of experience across championship level with wins and defeats, you feel like you're a much more well rounded fighter now Yeah 100% I kind of learnt the hard way with that, like, I thought the power would always solve everything, it doesn't um, so you've had to adapt my game and uh, You'll see more of that Saturday night as well. Yusuf, welcome. Part of the Dillian White stable. Um, a massive fight for you as well. I think for, for both of you guys, you have to win this fight on Saturday night. Um, you were flying in the pros. You lost to Castaneda in a great fight at the O2. You've come back with victories as well. Must win for you on Saturday night. Yeah, I want to thank you for another opportunity and my management team as well. Thank you to them for getting me another opportunity. Um, it's going to be a great fight. You know, in boxing, the same goals, styles make fights. Me and Reese's styles are going to gel very well. And this is definitely a fight of the night, or maybe even a fight of the year contender. Um, you know me, every time I come out, I'm always in a good fight. I'm never really in boring fights, so you get 100% entertainment when I step in the ring. Now, I look back to that Castaneda fight. That was, you know, I mean, your team has always been aggressive in the matchmaking. I was pleased you took that fight, but that was throwing you in deep early. But even coming through that loss, you feel like you learned so much over that 10 rounds. Yeah, definitely, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to be someone that has a padded record and has fights where I fight guys where I'm most likely going to win. I want to be in fights where even if I take the, loss, take the loss like I did against Castaneda, I learn from it. And I've learned a lot from that loss, and you're going to see what I've learned and come back with on Saturday. Well, both sold a lot of tickets for Saturday night. Yusuf Kamari, Reese Bellotti in the ring around 6pm live on Before the Bell on the Zone platform, Matchroom Boxing and YouTube around the world. 
Um, we go to the Romford ball, Johnny Fisher, who has his final eight-rounder on Saturday before he moves into ten rounds and championship action. Again, a big shout-out to Johnny Fisher, his old man, and the whole family, and the huge support that is coming to Wembley Arena. Blows us away every time. The opponent, Emilio Salas, Southpaw, plenty of experience, has upset the odds before against young prospects. Emilio, welcome. Um, you're going to experience some atmosphere on Saturday night, and we look forward to a great fight. Uh, okay. Buenas tardes a todo el mundo. Eh, gracias por la oportunidad. Y sí, eh, vamos a hacer una buena pelea. Tengo bastante experiencia. Tengo un, un peleador que es bastante fuerte, bastante bueno. So, vamos a trabajar para eso, hacer un buen show. Yes, so first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, I'm a, an experienced fighter. I'm hoping to put on you know, my best performance on Saturday, again against a, a strong fighter, and we'll do the best we can. Thank you, Emilio. Johnny, welcome back. Wembley Arena, been here before. Another step up for you. Southpaw this time, the first in your career, uh, and ready to put another explosive performance on at Wembley Arena on Saturday. Yep, definitely. Thank you to everyone who's going to turn out again and get a massive crowd in there. It's been a different camp, spying a Southpaw, new challenges, and uh, it's important that I tick every box moving forward. Um, always looking forward to putting an explosive performance as well, so that's what I'm planning to do. Yeah, adamant from your team that you wanted to face a Southpaw this time around, which is quite unique, really. It's normally the opposite, but just part of that grounding and experience for you before you move into the championship fights. Yeah, definitely. And every fight I go into, I go into it with the mentality that it's a 50-50 and that I've got a, everything's on the line. So when you get me in that ring, it's going to be intense and it's going to be exciting for the fans to watch. That's every time I fight, I want to put on exciting fights. So my, my style should do that. And finally, um, I know you're always blown away by the support, but becoming a little bit calmer now in that environment on those ring walks. I remember the first one at the O2 when this crazy fan base just started to erupt with a couple of thousand turned up that night for you as well but I know you're forever grateful but also forever now looking at, at, at being more calm in the situation and expecting it every time. Oh, I'm extremely grateful. I remember the uh, first time we walked out at the O2 and you came into the changing room Eddie and said Johnny you're not going to believe that crowd when you walk out there. I thought it'd be one little section but the, the whole of the bowl of the O2 was full up with Romford Army fans so I'm always grateful for everyone who has to spend their hard-earned money to come and watch me fight and I'll try and put on the best performance I can every single time. Thanks, Johnny. Look forward to that heavyweight fight. Johnny Fisher against Emilio Salas. This fight I'm so excited about. I think it's a tremendous domestic fight. Final eliminator for the British Cruiserweight Championship. David Jameson against Chev Clark. David, I'll start with you. Welcome. Um, I had your lot over in Dublin, part of the Jay McFarlane team, trying to have bets on me that you beat Chev Clark on Saturday. They were so convinced that you win this fight. And obviously this time... A long training camp for you against a very talented young prospect, but you and your team really fancy this one. Yeah, no, big time. First off, I'd just like to say it's a pleasure to be um, part of a matchroom promotion. So many t a talented, hard-working people behind the scenes. But, yeah, no, look, listen, you said it yourself, Eddie. Ten-week training camps, not ten days. Um, I'm looking forward to getting in there on Saturday night and showing everybody what we can do for a full training camp. Yeah, against Lawal, I know that you, you got injured in that fight, but you had 10 days to prepare. And straight away in that fight, I watched the fight, mm -hmm. and you were a danger throughout the fight. I thought that you were going to win the fight at one stage as well with, with basically zero preparation. I do also see Chev Clark as levels above Lawal as well, even though he has much lesser experience in the pro ranks as well. But a lot of people talking about this fight as a fantastic fight. Yeah, no, listen, you've got to back your man, Eddie. You and me both know that. Um, but listen, yeah, I think everybody knows... Look at our two styles, they speak for themselves. Don't go to the toilet, you know, don't go to the bathroom. This is going to be fight of the night, I think. Thank you, David. Chev, welcome. Um, I see a different Chev in this training camp. I think you know the test that's ahead of you on Saturday, and I think you're excited for it as well, and I think you're ready. Yeah, it's been a good training camp. Um, Spard, uh, Ron for Bully, and plenty of... of um, sparring partners but yeah it's been a good camp and a hard camp as always and uh, yeah we're fully prepared obviously you do have fairly limited experience in the pro game fantastic amateur pedigree but those 10 rounds that you got last time out tough tough opponent as well at short notice you took that fight they're the kind of fights that can really set you up for Saturday night yeah most definitely as you said it was a short notice but 
you know, me and my team, we adjusted and we were fully prepared and we got the job done. Well, look forward to a fantastic fight. Final eliminator, British Cruiserweight Championship, Chev Clark against David Jameson. As we move up to the World Championship fights on Saturday night, we'll start with Katie Healy against Nina Hughes. Katie, welcome. Um, a massive opportunity for you. We know that Nina was fighting Shannon Courtney. Um, she pulled out of the fight. We were looking for an opponent. Always want to give British fighters an opportunity. We know you have a huge pedigree in, in kickboxing as well, but in the pro game, massive opportunity for you to become world champion on Saturday. It's, it's amazing, and it was... I always say everything happens for a reason, and when we received that phone call, it was just a straight yes. It was an opportunity that we couldn't turn down, and it's one that I'm ever so grateful for, and I'm really excited for. So I'm feeling so ready for Saturday. It's, it's a life-changing moment for me, and I'm going to make every moment worth it. So I'm just, I just want to say thank you ever so much for the opportunity, and we're ready to go. You look at that opportunity, very similar one to, to the one that presented itself to Nina, the opportunity to fight a champion out of nowhere, really. She took that with both hands. You're there to win the fight. You, you know Nina Hughes. You believe you can become world champion on Saturday. 100%. I think self-belief is such a, a strong part of boxing. And I've always been one to have a really strong mentality. And I know this is a fight that we can win. We're coming for that win. And I'm 110% ready for this. Thank you, Katie. Nina? Talk about confidence. Yours has grown massively. I, I keep saying in interviews, and I don't mean it disrespectfully, I gave you the opportunity to fight Jamie Mitchell. I expected you to lose that fight. You won it easily, really, and you put yourself, arguably, as number one in the division. Loads of hard work with Kevin Lilly and change of opponent, but full of confidence going into Saturday night. Yeah, definitely. We've had a long camp. We've trained hard and we've trained for everything. And no matter what opponent we put in front of me, we're ready. I know now you look at unification fights and Ebony's here today and other champions as well, but these are sometimes the tricky ones against you know, young, hungry fighters who you might not know too much about, but just as hungry as you were when you flew out to Dubai to yeah, fight Jamie Mitchell. Exactly. She's in the same, opportunity, same situation as I was in Dubai. Like, no one knew I was going out there making the most of the opportunity, so I need to just make sure I keep my title. I worked too hard to get it, and I'm not letting it go. Yeah, that's the key. You remember those... Nights and shout out to Lee Eaton as well, those guys that kept plugging away with you on the small hall shows. You got the call from nowhere and now you have opportunities to make life-changing money in big unification fights. Can't afford to, to lose on Saturday. Yeah, definitely not. I can't have no slip up. So we've worked, we've worked hard and we've worked for everything. Thank you. Nina Hughes against Katie Healy for the WBA world title. This is a fantastic female fight on Saturday night. I, I love this fight between Ellie Scottney and Shanika Johnson. Ellie Scottney, who has long been one of our best young female prospects, has, has really done everything that's been asked of her. She's won championships. She's gone in deep early in her career against experienced fighters. Um, she won the European title. She won a final eliminator. And now she's in a position to challenge the IBF world champion on Saturday night. Ellie, it's finally here. It's like been a long time coming. But you look in great shape. Your time, you believe you become world champion on Saturday. Yeah, 100%. You know, I've been waiting for this moment for, I couldn't even put a, a time on it. So Saturday night is soon approaching and, you know, it's my turn to deliver. You've seen, you know, turn pro quite a while ago now. You've seen all these big fights sort of emerge and they're the fights that you want to be in. You want to be in unification fights. Shanika Johnson, very, very tough. You know, going to give you all you can handle, but you do believe that you're, you're the level above her. I said, you, I saw in an interview say, you think you're better in all, all aspects against Shanika Johnson and, and no doubts in your mind. Yeah, you know, I've got to go out there and deliver on Saturday night and like I say, I'm, I'm prepared to do whatever it takes to walk out the you know, IBF champion of the world and I'm certain I will be. And the team buzzing as well after Chris Billum's, I know he'll be there on Saturday, <laughs> a very close team. Um, mean a lot to, to those guys to have another world champion in the camp. Yeah, you know, we've been two world champions within 14 days and, you know, Jim's flying, so it's on me now. Thank you, Ellie. Shanika, welcome. Um, looking to make this fight for a long time. You've taken a challenge. You've flown overseas. I know you've been in camp in America as well. Um, ready to defend your world championship on Saturday night? Ready to defend, yes. I've had a solid camp over in America, and this is the best camp that I've done yet. So I'll be taking my, home, my belt home with me. Talk about that camp in America. A lot of fighters, particularly from Australia, you see now, traveling abroad, not just for fights as well, but for the camp. Is that mainly for the sparring? Obviously, you know, you're in a very professional camp over there in America as well, and you've had the hard sparring you think you need for this fight as well. 
Definitely with the, with the sparring and just the level of training, I feel like in Australia you get to a point where you're at the top and you need other people to push you. So um, to be over in America and being pushed out of my comfort zone is definitely something that I needed for this fight. Ellie believes she's levels above you. And you are the underdog going into this fight as well. Does that surprise you? I saw an interview with you where, you know, I don't know if you feel disrespected in that respect, but you believe you should be the favourite going into this fight. Look, for me, being the underdog, there's no pressure. I, I know what, my, what I'm capable of, and I don't feel like the under, underdog, but if all you guys think that I'm the underdog, then that's cool, you know? Like, I just feel like it is what it is, and come Saturday night, you'll see. Well, fantastic fight for the IBF World Title Champion, Shanika Johnson against Ellie Scottney. And we go on to our main event. This young man causing plenty of waves around Britain and the world right now. Sunny Showtime Edwards against Andre Campos from Chile, looking to become the first world champion from Chile on Saturday night. Sunny Edwards, I think, is, you know, I made a comment earlier this week where I said this man could be the best pound for pound fighter in Britain. I honestly believe he's a special talent. I said yesterday as well, he didn't lie. I never particularly used to like him. You know, I used to watch him on social media and think, I'm not sure about this kid. I had to pull him up once in Sheffield and he had a go at me. And I thought, you know, at the end of the day, if you can't beat him, sign him. And as I saw him win the World Championship against Mithalani, I didn't, again, I told him yesterday, I didn't really want him to win that night. He was unbelievable. Didn't lose a second of any round. Won every round. And I believe he's a very special fighter, a fighter that could go on and become undisputed in the flyweight division. Would you make him favourite against Jesse Bam Rodriguez? Would you make him favourite against Julio Cesar Martinez Delakian? Would you make him favourite against Roman Gonzalez and Juan Francisco Estrada? Quite possibly. But Saturday night, as I said before, we talk about all these fights and Alfie talks about the zone on a global level and we can deliver all these huge unification fights around the world. Yes, we can. But you have to beat what's in front of you. To my left is a young, hungry challenger, undefeated, looking to become the first world champion from Chile, a good, good fighter who's been calling Sonny Edwards out for two years, now gets his opportunity on Saturday night. Andres, welcome. You've been calling for this fight for a long time. You've got it. You're facing a fantastic fighter, but you believe you become Chile's first world champion on Saturday. En primer lugar, bienvenido, Andrés. Has llamado por mucho tiempo esta pelea, has, has querido esta pelea. Finalmente ya la tienes eh, y tam, supongo que tienes, eh, crees mucho que podrías llegar a ser el primer campeón mundial de Chile. Sí, buen día. Primero que todo, muchas gracias, Eddie. Eh, la verdad que he trabajado mucho para este día. Eh, vamos a demostrar el sábado con, con hechos sobre el ring y no con palabras. Voy a ser el primer campeón mundial chileno. First of all, thank you very much, Eddie, for the opportunity. As you say, I've worked very hard for this opportunity, and we're going to show on Saturday night that we can do it, and that I can become the first world champion from Chile. I loved the head-to-head -head yesterday. Um, you know, there was a lot of backwards and forwards. It was high-level stuff. You said you were going to smash his head in. He called you a Chilean rat. Um, but words aside, this is personal for you only to become world champion. But this guy doesn't seem to like you very much either. Sí, vimos la cara a cara ayer, que muchas, muchas palabras ahí. Él te llamó como rata chilena y después le diste que le vas a romper la cara. Es muy personal quizás para él, pero para ti es solamente negocio que quieres convertirte en campeón del mundo, quizás. Sí, yo vengo a hacer mi trabajo solamente. Él me faltó el respeto a mí, le faltó el respeto a mi equipo. Vamos a ver si el sábado se van a, al medio del ring a pelear conmigo y, y que demuestre lo malo que fue en la calle, tanto en el ring. Lo voy a esperar. So yeah, you know, I'm only focused on my only on doing my work. You know, he was disrespectful to me and also to my team on Saturday. I hope he meets it meets me in the middle of the ring, and we're going to have a tear up. And finally, this man has plenty of skill, and people think the way to beat him is pressure, and and try and obviously hurt him in the fight. That's what you're going to bring on Saturday night. You're going to try and meet him in a fight, put the pressure on him, walk him down, and, and win by knockout on Saturday. Sí, muchas personas dicen que es muy habilidoso eh, Sonny Edwards eh, y la forma de, de ganarle es presionarle mucho y, y hacer, hacer tu pelea y presionarle siempre. ¿Es la forma que quieres hacer la pelea mañana y vas a buscar el KO? Bueno, el ideal es, es ganar por no KO antes del 12. Eh, la verdad es que el, el plan de pelea tenemos plan A, plan B y plan C. Estamos preparados para esta pelea, trabajé muy duro para este día, así que vamos a ganar. So that's the idea, you know, you always look for the KO in a fight, but we have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. But we've worked really hard for this, for this opportunity in this fight, and we're going to win. Thank you, Andros.
Sonny, welcome. First time up here with you. It's been an eventful fight week. Um, everyone's talking about these big moments, these undisputed fights, but I know you believe you're a level above Andres Cambos, but he's coming with everything on Saturday night. It's a dream opportunity for him, and, and you do expect the best of him. I mean, firstly, thank you to all the matchroom staff, um, the zone, yourself, Eddie, Frank Smith, for believing in me. Um, I think I'm definitely in the best place and the, the best position of my career. I'm really, really excited about what the future holds. Um, obviously, you know me, Eddie, when I signed, I wanted the big fights now. I feel like I've already been made to wait way too long for them anyway. Um, but yeah, that's not happened yet. The other champions weren't on my timeline. They weren't willing to fight me just yet. I don't think any of them are immediately ready to fight me just now anyway. I think we're going to still struggle after this fight. Um, but respect to Campos, as I know the fight was offered to a couple of the top 15, a couple of the top 10, and he was the first one to say yes. We had about 24 hours to get an opponent for this date. I found out a seven weeks notice. I said that was no problem. Um, but yeah, it just happened to be that for the last, well, since December 2021, he's been calling me out, tagging me and stuff. I've been getting messages from all his little Muppet team and trainers and whoever. But he said, I've been disrespectful. I've been shown a lot of disrespect for the last 18 months. And then when he gets to the, when he gets the fight, he signs the contract. All of a sudden, he goes ghost. And he disappears. I was ready for some little bit of build-up. You know, even if it was just a bit of socials, um, ideally, I would have wanted a press conference seven weeks ago so we could have had a face-off. But obviously, that didn't happen. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a, a good opportunity for me to showcase what I'm on. Do I believe Andres Campos? Is the biggest threat in the world? No. Do I think he belongs in the ring with me? I'll be real, I don't, I think. There's a lot of fighters, probably 50 fighters at the weight, probably 100 fighters at the weight that have done more of him, more than him deserving. He's boxed easy opponents over 10 rounds and struggled over and over again. Split decisions in six rounders. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think they can believe their luck, to be honest. They did a GoFundMe to fucking catch flights for all of these idiots. So, um, yeah, they were on holiday. But yeah, on Saturday, it's not going to go their way. I don't, I don't think they even think it, to be honest. I don't think they even think they're going to win, to be honest. I, I genuinely don't. I just think it ain't got nothing else. So yeah, that's why it's here. When you two, you're obviously not a big fan of Andres Campos, but does that mean you win in style? And is that the pressure for you on Saturday night? You know, you're talking about being levels above this guy. He shouldn't be in the ring with you. Do you have to go out there and put a really dominant display on? Yeah, it's whatever I want it to be, I think. And I feel like, you know, a 26-year-old that doesn't even know in himself if he can do 12 rounds under the lights yet, I'm not the person to find out. I am not the fighter. I've had veterans that have not lost in decades struggle to even put together two punches against me over 12 rounds. Head completely gone. I've got a 26-year-old Muppet from a country that's never had a world champion. Got an amateur hour set up. He's been sparring with all the amateurs or so, I've heard. Um... Yeah, I just think he's delusion and, and about disrespect. What has this man to my left done in a boxing ring to tell me that I'm not good enough? What would, would, we could find out on Saturday, maybe you can say it on Saturday, but to be on the run up, if, that, if that's not disrespect, I don't know what it is, but as soon as he got to my face, they didn't want to look me in the eyes, they wanted to go all quiet. We had a face to face where they said we're going to walk into each other and the Muppet didn't even take his hat off. Very disrespectful, wants to talk about disrespect. Tried to bounce his peak of his cap off my head. So I dashed it off his head and he didn't get no reaction. He stood there for five seconds like a rabbit in headlights. And like I said with Coogan yesterday, he was nervous. He tried smiling it off and laughing it off, but I can see the energy in him. He knows he's a beaten man. I'm going to send him back to the mountains of Chile with nothing but a little paycheck from you, Eddie. So the only person he really has to thank is you. Okay. <laughs> And uh, finally, you've been crying out for this opportunity for a long time. A lot of people in boxing believe how special you are. This is your moment Saturday night, big audience around the world to show everybody how good Sunny Showtime Edwards is, make a statement and go on and try and win all the belts in the division. Yeah, and I feel like, I know you, you already know, Eddie, that it's been a hard task to try and get these champions to respond and you know, be any closer to making the fights. They all want too much money to fight me. They all want retirement money to fight me. They all want millions to fight me. I've got four knockouts, as everyone keeps reminding me, but I've got 19 fights and not 1% of the fights I've ever looked like losing. Boxing's been easy for me, and I think <laughs> my 20th fight's probably one of my easiest. I don't think I've had a fight as easy as this since Ryan Farag. 
And finally, I have to say, because your phone is on the right of me, and I've just seen Twitter notification after Twitter notification after Twitter. Are you going to come off Twitter before the fight? Is, does it not wind you up? I mean, how can you stay focused on fight week when you are constantly... To, I mean, and it is you, right? Yeah, it's me, even though the profile says not Sonny Edwards, it is me, I'll be wrong. Unless someone tries suing me, then it's not me. It's my management team. Um, but in all seriousness, I don't think people understand the way my brain works. Do I look stressed for Saturday? People, you know, the, the media team, we've done all the filming yesterday, we've done the... Boxing doesn't phase me, it's all I've ever done. I've never, you know, had to clock in for work. It's all I've ever done since a nine-year-old boy. I'm 27 years old now. It doesn't bother me, it doesn't phase me. I fight, a physical, whatever, whatever, it doesn't. Saturday night, just like the last 19, and just like hopefully the next 19 after that, it's just gonna be a walk in the park, so do I need to come off Twitter? Maybe, but is it affecting my mental? Of course it's not. If anything, I get a little something out of the little verbal back and forward. And I like my name being at the top of everyone's timelines. If it is annoying them, then that's the better. Like, I'm, I don't mind being the, the antagonist. I don't, I don't naturally feel like I have to impress people or make people like me to be any, you know, that's my worth. I'd rather wind people up and then surprise them when they want me to get beat. And then it's just more frustrating watching me make this little Muppet look silly for 12 rounds if I let him go that long. Um, I haven't said ever that I'm going to knock someone out in a boxing ring because I never go in there looking for it. But this kid, I can't see him going 12 rounds. He's never been 12 rounds before. And he struggled against kids that couldn't lace my boots before I jumped in the ring for a world title fight. Like I said, I don't know how he's here. I don't know how it worked out that 15-0 and 0 against no ones has got 7th for the IBF. But, you know, that's the ranking system and that's a question for another day about boxing. But... Here we are, he's who I've got, and I'm going to show him the levels that I've got on Saturday night. Well, thank you. Fascinating stuff. Sonny Edwards against Andres Campos on Saturday night for the IBF World Flyweight title. A fantastic night of boxing from top to bottom. As we said earlier, before the bell action, three of our very best prospects, Muhammad Ali, George Lidard and Shannon Ryan, we're going to a brilliant 50-50 final eliminator for the British title between Reese Bellotti and Yusuf Kamari. The return, of course, of the Romford Bull, Johnny Fisher against Emilio Salas. A fantastic fight between Chev Clark and David Jameson. Final eliminator for the British Cruiserweight Championship. Three world championships up here. Nina Hughes against Katie Healy. Ellie Scottney against Shanika Johnson. And, of course, Sonny Showtime Edwards looking to make a statement in front of the world against Andres Campos. Don't miss all the action, live and exclusive, around the world on the zone. We're going to finish now with head-to-heads up here and all the fighters available for the media. Thank you very much. Thanks, Eddie. Well, there we go. Heard from all of the undercard fighters and, of course, our main events is ahead of Saturday. Darren, I just wish Sonny Edwards would just come out of his shell a little bit, you know? Yes. Tell us what you really think, tell, you what, tell us what you really think, <laughs> mate. Don't sit on the fence. Tell us how you feel. Um, do you know, it's very interesting. I had a really good catch-up with him earlier this week. And I really, I've never had this kind of conversation with a fighter where I believed them as much as him when he said... I really enjoy camp, I really enjoy boxing. It doesn't interrupt my life, it doesn't disrupt my life. Everything I do is built around it. I know I've got boxes to tick, but it isn't a chore. I never really get, get in the gym and feel like I hate sparring, I hate this, I hate that. He said, I like every aspect of it. And that enjoyment and that relaxation, because he doesn't beat himself up about little things in the gym, when he gets in there, what you are seeing is someone who's totally relaxed, who's in the flow. And with the style that he has, the reflexes, everything, very hard man to beat. Well, well he said it there uh, on the top table. It's all he knows. He won't remember life before boxing. It, it's been part of his life uh, since such an, an early age. And I remember I was very similar. It's all I know. It's where I'm comfortable. It is the place, the gym and, uh, and the boxing rings, where I could express myself. This man here has an opportunity to make history. That always makes you a dangerous fighter. We see it, I mean, completely different ends of the weights, but Andy Ruiz to, to become Mexico's first heavyweight world champion. He's got the opportunity to be the first world champion full stop from Chile. It's George Lidard from uh, The Sims Gym in Essex he is in action. Third on before the bell. Ring walk scheduled for just before half past five. In against uh, Nicolas Zunak from Viscoff in Czech Republic. He's 5 3 and 2. That isn't him. Of course, that is Muhammad Ali on the right. And uh, Muhammad Ali has been out with Dave Colwell's stable sparring stateside. First spar, I think he had when they got there. Of course, it's a little bit of a lottery as to who you're going to get, but they're in some very, very good gyms. 
um, Robert Garcia. And the first bar he got was Joshua Franco. First bar that Stephen Cairns got was Virgil Ortiz Jr. on the first day. I think he had six or eight rounds. Well, and and, and the first bar that they got was Muhammad Ali. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't lose, can you? Well, you can. Um, so yeah. So Dave, Dave Colwell, uh, very very impressed with these young fighter out there. These two lads. I mean, what a domestic scrap we got here. Eliminator for the British Super Featherweight title. Fourth and final fight on before the belt. Ringwalk scheduled for about five past six. First bell scheduled for 11 minutes past. So do not miss that. Myself, Darren, and Barry Jones will be on the call. Reese Bellotti, of course, on the rebuilds, um, winning the Southern Area title after those defeats to Jordan Gill and Ray Ford. And, and Yusuf Kamari, of course, as we heard on the comeback trail um, after losing out to Jorge Castaneda style wise. It's just not going to let us down. It, it won't. And Eddie said it there. It's winner stays on. And we've seen these fights before. When it's in that sort of scenario, they always deliver. Big lump, Emilio Salas on the right from San Sebastian in Puerto Rico. He's going to be in with a big, strong man who's finished all but one of his eight opponents so far in the Romford Ball, Johnny Fisher, who is chief support to get the crowd moving at around about half past nine. Those two will be doing battle before we go to Sonny Edwards. Um, so those four fights will take us uh, Muhammad Ali, Shannon Ryan, George Lidard um, and of course Yusuf Kamari and Riz Bellotti on before the belt. Before we kick off the main card at seven o'clock, I think the action is starting with Nina Hughes and Katie Healy. That is of course not them. That is Chef Clark and David Jameson who, as you heard from Eddie Hearn there, put in a really spirited display on 10 days notice against Mikhail Luau for, for the British title, fell short, was stopped late, I think he had a broken jaw in that fight, but there were points in yeah. that fight where it looked like he was going to take over and, and win the fight. This is not an easy scrap for Chef Clark. Well, I'm just going to say this is fireworks. It is 100% fireworks, um, without a shadow of a doubt. Well, our monitor has uh, gone down here at the desk, so we can't see what you folks are seeing at home, so we'll just carry on nattering anyway. Eddie Hearn waiting for Nina Hughes and uh, Katie Healy, who are heading up. Nina Hughes, of course. We got the news that Nina Hughes had beaten Jamie Mitchell the, the night that White and Franklin, I think they were in the ring at the time, and word started yeah. getting around that Nina Hughes, and I remember all the surprise, and I think people were very, very happy for Nina Hughes. She was um, a, a staple member of the GB squad leading up to 2012, missed out on selection to, to Nicola Adams. There were no real female opportunities for her, so she, I think, was lost her space on the GB squad 2013. And the monitor's back up and running. Well done, Neil. Thank you very much. Um, but Katie Healy from Gab Burrows' gym has been a, a mentee of, of Rachel Ball, inspiring of her a lot um, over the years. And they say style-wise, she, she's got what Gab Burrows says is the perfect combination to, to cause real problems for, for Nina Hughes. Yeah, it's a good fight. I think, firstly, Nina Hughes would be over the moon that she's got a new opponent. She would have been bitterly disappointed that Shannon Courtney pulled out. But this is another cracking fight. When I look at this fight stylistically, I think this delivers straight away. I, I, look, with the 10-2-minute two, uh, two round format, Shanika Johnson, she's a very good fire word behind a jab, but we've seen with Ellie Scottney, she has that fire in her eyes, that bit between her teeth. She's a very good fighter, has that brilliant amateur pedigree, but there's that excitement that she brings every single time she fights. So this one, I've no doubt, delivers early doors. She's had three brilliant 10 rounders um, in her last three fights to prepare her well for this, including beating Mary Romero with relative ease, really, to become the European champion at 122 pounds. This is again another step up for Scottney, um, it could be um, her opportunity to become world champion. Sonny Edwards making the fourth defence of the IVF flyweight world title. We know that he believes he is the best in the world in his division. He will need to beat Bam Rodriguez and Julio Cesar Martinez, potentially Artem Delakian as well, to prove that beyond all doubt. But he cannot take his eyes off Andre Campos, who's been champion at the bit to get his hands on him for a couple of years. He's going to be unwise to headhunt early in this fight, Campos, but he's a good body puncher. Yeah, he's got a fantastic jab as well. He varies it up really well, head and body, which is going to be crucial if he's got any chance of competing with Sonny Edwards. It's sink or swim for Campos. We've seen the confident talking from Sonny Edwards since this fight was announced. He, he, he lives for this stage, Sonny. He hear him then we said at the top of the show tell us what you really think you know where you stand with Sonny but he's a very confident man who is really really 
enjoying this moment being a world champion. He said to me uh, a few days ago, he said, you know, people have criticized him for, you know, Alvarado and, and Mithalani, slightly older fighters, and people have said, well, have you really beaten anybody in their in their prime? But he said, trust me, give me a young fighter over an old experienced champion any day. They don't, they're almost yeah. numb to, to the psychological mind games, the tricks in the ring. They don't break as easily mentally. They just keep coming, they keep focused, they keep their shape. He said, young kids like this, he said, they're cannon fodder for me to mess with mentally. And that's what he wants to do, Sasha. Well, absolutely. You want to test yourself uh, against the best, and sometimes the best are the young fighters coming through. Look, he's, un he's protecting an unbeaten record. He's also got the opportunity to make, create history. So that in itself is, is danger. That is danger. This is a man that really wants to, to make something of himself and his life. Well... There is Sonny Edwards' main man on Saturday. Another one of the main men at DAZN. I don't know if you lost a bet and you've got to come spend some time with me and Darren. I, no, sorry, I won. Mate. I won. I won. <laughs> well, no, it's an awful competition if this is the prize. Um, great to see you, uh, and you Alfie. Guys. So, um, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Firstly, something that's actually very close to my heart, the Harringay Box Club, the DAZN is yeah. sponsoring this year. Um, Sunday, it's a uh, week after this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and yeah, three-day event. Yeah, uh, amazing event. For those of you that don't know, one of the biggest international box cups in Europe. Might even be the biggest. Something like four simultaneous rings in Ali Pali. John Denon and I worked on this we commentated on I think 90 bouts in about three days wow. and you get to see so many young talents go through there and uh, yeah designed to put their put their name all over it haven't they? yeah as you say um, it is the biggest amateur tournament in Europe mm. I think last year they had about 5,000 people come over the three oh, days man, yeah so amazing exposure for for up-and-coming fighters who are obviously you know we're so proud to be involved in it you know it's not just lip service when we talk about grassroots um, we're looking to the next generation and you know it's amazing to see the communities coming together uh, you know the young kids coming through obviously it's produced some amazing stars AJ's won it twice Katie Taylor yeah. I think Siobhan Clark did as well yeah and uh, Nina Hughes was there yeah, when she was Hughes. coming back to actually I first met Ben Whitaker there as well Jordan Reynolds one of your fighters yeah. too so there's lots and lots of good talent it's there. amazing for us to be there we're there for three days um, and yeah fantastic fantastic tournament. Saturday night though what a card we've got Sonny yeah. was so confident you hear him up there he really believes in himself Must be exciting for you guys to have him as part of the roster amazing yeah as i said up there i think you know for us when 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 the signing was announced it was uh you know it was great news he's a real character obviously he's an incredible fighter as well yeah. world champ um i was standing in line with this with the face off there and i was thinking you know felt a little <laughs> bit intimidated myself you know he really wants it and you know his opponent his game so it's going to be a great, great event and yeah, obviously uh, you know, um, fantastic undercover. And uh, we should have a quick look over the, the schedule because, of course, he um, and Campbell's will be doing battle in London Saturday night. And then we head to the overnight for the UK view. Jaime Mingirin, Serhai Derevinchenko in Ontario, California. Then, of course, next week, and I'm lucky enough to be heading out there to do Before the Bell, we go to New Orleans for Pro Grade Daniel Ito Zaria. Um, so there's, there's lots coming up over the next few weeks. Talk us through some of the stuff that we got to, to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, as you say, Regis Pro Grey. I mean, in the next in the next kind of seven weeks, you're sorted, really. You got you obviously got a double header this weekend. Jaime Mungia returns uh, again. You know, big big trajectory for him. But obviously, Sunny and the undercard this 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 weekend is a whole night of boxing. Stanionis, Virgil Ortiz Jr. coming up in there as yeah. well. Baron Gardner fighting in there. Obviously, Dalton Smith, yep. amazing fight. Alanga, Alanga quickly, um, and then Regis Progre, you know, with his debut. So, you know, really, really exciting. You know, I've been at a few press conferences recently, and it's a really, really proud yeah, moment. Experience for you, being able to sit up there and sort of get the energy and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's so. I was enjoying the interpreter. Um, Kieran Simpson. Kieran. Kieran. Oh, he, stirring, he, stirring. He is the best. Honestly, he, when it comes. As translators, Kieran is the best without a shadow of a yeah. doubt. I was, I was, I kind of looking over and thinking, was he stirring it up a little bit? <laughs> but no, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it's a great, it's a great time for the zone. Yeah, yeah it certainly is. Uh, Diego Pacheco's out as well against uh, Manuel Gallegos. Big weekend on July 7th. Following days, uh, Stanley Ernest and Ortiz, as you mentioned, Baumgartner in Leonardo to Detroit, Michigan, and then to cap it all, August 5th, Jake Paul and Nate Diaz. The hardcores will hate me, but I know we are looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. Massive. A lot of fun. Look. We know Jay Paul, he puts bums on seats. Yeah, you know, he gets views. People want to tune in and see him. Absolutely. I mean, look, you've got, I mean, Nate Diaz, obviously a legend in the MMA game. Two huge names. Um, massive moment for us, a global pay-per-view for us. Um, we have it everywhere. The only place to watch it. Uh, so, yeah, a bit of fun, huge event. And look, they both take it very seriously, of course. So, yeah, be brilliant. Yeah, yeah super. So Alfie, pleasure to meet you, mate. Yeah. Thanks very Cheers, much. Alfie. Thanks. Cheers, um, so, that is all from us. Uh, thanks to Alfie Sharman, all our uh, fighters on the undercard. Nine on the bill Saturday. Um, that is all from us this afternoon. But we'll, of course, be back from one o'clock uh, for the weigh in tomorrow. Sonny Edwards and Andrews Campos will be hitting the scales, as will uh, Chanika Johnson and Ellie Scott and Nina Hughes and Katie Healy, our three uh, world title fights on the bill. Plenty more besides. And, of course, all the action.
kicks off um, around about half past four on Saturday afternoon. Load of fights on before the bell. Yusuf Kamari and Reese Bellotti um, in a, a, an eliminator for the British Super Featherweight title. And then it all kicks off seven o'clock live on the zone from Wembley Arena. But before then, thanks to your company, folks. We will see you tomorrow. Just take part and either stand out.